Hello, my friends. Um, thank you for joining me. Let's go ahead and take a look <clears throat> at what Paul Deepika teaches us about Mercury in the 12 houses. Hopefully, you remember all the points about the nature of the material in the first place. You're dealing with parts of a recipe, not finished meals. So the finished meal is the interpretation. Now we're dealing with ingredients in the recipe. So just like if you were to just eat cinnamon, it wouldn't taste anything like a cinnamon roll, would it? Or if you would even just eat salt, it wouldn't taste like potato chips. In fact, it would be kind of gross. Whereas it tastes very good when it's in a potato chip. So just re remember that. We're dealing with the ingredients that are at the part of the recipe of an actual interpretation. Great. So let's get started. Mercury in the houses. We're starting with the 11th text in, what is it, the 8th chapter. He says, Dear Kayur Janmani Ge, Madura Chatura Vak, Sara Shastra. Shastartha Bodha. So it means if Mercury is in the first, then you get Dirk Hayur, which means long life. You'll get Madura Chaturavak, which means speaking excellently and tactfully. And you'll be very intelligent, literally comprehends the meaning of all textbooks. Sarva Shastartha Bodha. Okay, now can you understand the thought process behind these words? Because that's what you need to understand. It's actually a very simple thought process. It's, it's just Mercury, right? Basically, it's just Mercury. Mercury in the first house is basically just interpreted as Mercury. So in other words, very good with speech and very good with intellect. It's very simple. The other thing is because the first house is the body, it affects the lifespan or the health of the body. Mercury is a healthy planet. Mercury is a benefic planet. So you get long life. It indicates long life. Right? Very simple. Very clear. Any questions, let me know. I'm going to mark this as a beautiful, good color. Mercury in the first house is good. You can see how much the author loves Mercury. All right, we keep going. Now let's see what he has to say about the second house. Syad buddhyo parajitaswa kavir amalavacha vachi mishtana bhukta. So this means you earn your wealth from your own expertise. Uparjita swa kavi. And then uh, kavi also means learned. And then well spoken and truthful. Amala vacha vachi. And eats very well. Mishtana bhukta, which literally enjoys sweet food. All right, so this is the interpretation for Mercury in the second. Earns wealth from his own expertise, is learned, is well-spoken and truthful, eats very well. Again, ask yourself, do you understand the thought process that Montreshwar has in order to write this? His thought process is, again, pretty simple. The second house is the house of your wealth. The kind of wealth that supports your life. Not the kind of wealth for frivolous things. Not spending money, but the kind of wealth that supports your life, that enables you to buy a house, enables you to buy food, etc. If Mercury is in the second house, then it has a certain effect on wealth because Mercury is mercantile. Mercury is good with money. So it will have a good effect on wealth to have Mercury in the second house, and it will be through the flavor of Mercury, which is intelligence, or expertise, or learning. So this is the thought process that he has 
behind the statement that this person earns money by their own intellect or by their own talent or expertise or learning. So for example, so in other words, what he's saying is this person is not likely a shudra, they're not likely just an employee. They're likely somebody who has their own plans, has their own way of doing things that's good, good enough that they can actually earn money from that. You understand? So it's good for people who start their own businesses, etc. Mercury in the second. Kavi. The second thing is he says, in general, it's learned. Thought process is, also, is very simple. The second house is all the stuff that supports us. Our knowledge is a very important thing to support us, knowing what is what. So Mercury is intellect, so if it's in a house that pertains to knowledge, it's a very synergistic thing. So Mercury in the second house is going to be good for get, having knowledge. So he says, Covey, they're learned. And Covey also goes with the statement of earns wealth from their own expertise. And then, then he, the third thing he says is about how he speaks. Again, the thought process is so simple. The second house is how you speak. It's the mouth. It's the voice. If you put Mercury, which is the planet of speech, in the house of speech, yeah, you see the thought process? The thought process is the same thing that I break down for you in every single video that I do with the planets and signs that I've been doing for now a long time. It's the same exact thought process. You look for what is what it is about the planet and what it is about the sign or house or whatever that is on the same issue that it's talking about the same thing and if it's together like if they talk about it the same way then it comes out good so here for example mercury is about your speech linguistics language second house is about speech so you would be silly if you overlook the impact that mercury in the second house has on how you understand the person's speech and he says it will be amalavacha. That literally means the, the clean words. They speak clean words. So they'll speak clearly, crisply. They probably are not prone to use profanity. Don't forget, this is one aspect of the recipe. I don't know what else is also affecting the second house. Maybe Rahu and Saturn and a whole bunch of stuff is also affecting the second house. Don't just get tunnel vision and just think Mercury is in the second house and that's the only thing about this person. But this part of the recipe is clean speech, clear speech, crisp speech. Um, Amala also means not deceitful. So clean speech also means truthful speech. So Mercury in the second house makes the person enunciate clearly, speak clearly, speak accurately, speak truly. And they speak well in general. Vachi, they know many languages. They know several languages. They know their language well. And then the final thing he says, Mishtana Bokta. Again, thought process should be very easy, simple. The second house is the house of diet. Mercury is what? It's a benefic planet, and it's a healthy planet. So they're going to get health by eating mercurial foods. Mercurial foods are kind of light foods, easy foods, nice foods. All righty, any questions? So this one again comes up very good. Mercury in the second house and Mercury in the first house. I'm pretty sure I likes them both. Hi, Heta. We'll look at what Venus does soon, Zena. Let's not jump ahead. All right, let's have a look at Mercury in the third. Shaurye Shura Samayu Sahaja Sahina Sashramo Dainya Yukta. I heard you guys talking about this. Third and sixth. You really kind of. It's kind of silly if you don't know this already. 
because remember the patterns for the sun the sun was only good in three and six right i mean three six nine ten eleven um the moon was not three six was bad soft planets hard planets remember i make a big deal out of this try to try to i try to drill this into your heads so mercury in the third Shorye Shurya Ashura means they're timid. Samayu means they have a moderate lifespan. Su Sahaja, they get along well with Sahaja. They get along well with their peers, they get along well with their siblings. And Sahina uh, Sashramo Danya Yukta, if they have a lot of work and responsibilities, they feel dejected right away. So look at the thought process here. You, it, the more important is that you understand the thought process so that you can answer your own questions in, 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 a, in another chart, which is never exactly the theory, the baseline. So the thought process is the third house is for bravery and toughness. It's going to go well with a masculine planet like Sun, Mars. It's going to go well with a hard planet, a planet that can be tough. It doesn't go well with gentle planets because the topics of the third house are not gentle things. Topics of the third house are ambition, lust, drive, strength, bravery, willpower, incentive, motivation. You don't want to be soft in any of those things. But Mercury is so gentle and middling. But it's, not, it's not a very soft, soft planet. So it's not a disaster to have Mercury in the third house, but it's certainly not a hard planet. It's a very balanced planet. So you're going to get these effects. The third house is the house for bravery and boldness, Shura. Mercury is not brave and bold. Mercury is intelligent and careful and cautious. So the result is Ashura, timidity. That lifespan, it will be summa. It's not going to be destroyed. It's not going to be enhanced. It's just like equalized, moderate lifespan. But he, the, he says there's a good thing from Mercury in the third. It's susahaja. He's going to get along well with the peers. Why? The thought process behind this. The third house has to do with your, the people that you compete with. The third house is all about com competition, right? So it has to do with the people that we compete with. So th those are not our seniors and they're not our juniors. We compete with our equals. We compete with our peers. And our siblings are our peers. So the third house is about peers and siblings. Mercury is about cooperation, peer-to-peerness, equality, balance. So there is something very good or same about mercury in the third house that's what it is mercury is good with equals and the third house is about equals peers mercury is very peerish and the third house is peer about peers so the one good thing that will come from mercury in the third house is good brothers good sisters good friends good peers getting along well with people who most people would compete with not being overly competitive But uh, timidity is not so great. And then the last thing is very interesting also about Mercury. It dejected if burdened with work. Shashramo Danya Yukta. The third house is the thing that gives the enthusiasm, the lust, the passion, the drive. Mercury is delicate. It doesn't have a lot of drive. It doesn't have a lot of force to it. So Mercury is delicate and recreational. But here it's in the house of work. So it's a clash between recreation and work. It's light and recreational, whereas the seventh, third house is sharp and ambitious. So it's goal-oriented. So that clash. That clash is the thought process behind what he's saying here. The result is they easily feel exhausted or they easily feel their enthusiasm run out as soon as it gets to be worky. Good.
asking questions. I'm going to mark this as a medium house for Mercury. Medium good. Let's see if you have questions. But what about when you discuss entrepreneurs with Mercury in the third and sixth? Because Mercury is. You, Mercury in and of itself in the third house is going to be this medium effect, timidity. It's part of the recipe. We have to see the rest of the recipe. Suraj and everybody, you keep doing this stuff with third and sixth is Mercury. I need you to stop thinking like that. Houses are not science. Don't, houses are just not science. Pisces is not the 12th house, okay? Capricorn is not the 10th house. It's the 10th sign. So stop thinking, well, Mercury owns the 3rd and 6th sign, so Mercury should be good in the 3rd and 6th house. That's like saying, I like oranges, so I should like apples. I like the 3rd orange on the list, so I should therefore also like the 3rd apple. Maybe I should like the 3rd of everything. So just don't think that way. I'm tired of people thinking that way. The third and sixth are not Mercury's own houses. Mercury owns the third sign and the sixth sign. It does not have anything to do with houses. Going on to the fourth. Sankhyavan Chatuvakya Suridi Sukra Surit Chaitra Dhanyartha Bhogi Mercury in the fourth, a, mas a mathematician, a linguist, good relationships, enjoys land, property, and wealth. So he loves it. He loves Mercury in the fourth. Thought process, basic thought process. Of course he loves Mercury in the fourth. Then we should have been able to predict that because Mercury is a gentle planet, a benefic planet. The fourth is a gentle, benefic house. So, of course, basically the interpretation is going to be good. Now details, Sankhyavan. Sankhyavan means they, um, I'm not sure if I want to translate it as mathematician or not, ultimately, but I'm putting that down for now. Sankhya means counting. Sankhyavan means somebody who can count. So it, it means a mathematician, but it also might mean somebody who has a lot of property or somebody who's a merchant or somebody who has the cash register. Okay, so it could be, I would reserve my understanding of this until the future, when I'm more clear about it. It's either going to be mathematician or merchant. Understand the reasoning? A counter might mean he's good with numbers. And you know what? It's, it's, it's fluid, because this is one part of the recipe. It depends on how it mixes with the rest of the rest ingredients. So that's Sankhyavan, and then linguist, Chatuvakya. They can speak well. Why? Well, Mercury in the fourth house, they can speak well. Well, Mercury is all about speech, right? Again, what's the thought process? The thought process is kind of... perhaps a little bit simple. It's just Mercury is doing good here on these two things, mathematicians and linguists. I would tend to say, if, if we're going to think of Samkivan as more in the line of somebody who has a cash register, a merchant, then that may make more sense because the fourth house has to do with treasures. Mercury has to do with money, and the fourth house has to do with treasures. So they probably are wealthy. They have a cash register. As for the linguist, I can't really put my finger on what his thought process is. Unless we put it, unless we um, frame it in the context of able to express their emotions and ideas. The other, the this other thing, this third thing, is very, very simple and obvious. Suridi, Suridi, that's the fourth house, but Surit, right? He should have good relationships. The person with Mercury in the fourth house is good relations. That should be obvious. 
Fourth house is bandhu, relationships, the family, the roots, the people that you can depend on. So it's your very good, very good friends, and it's your family, people that help you grow up. So that's what the fourth house is all about, bandhu, the friends, the bonds, the family. And Mercury is all about friends and relationships. So if you put the planet relationships in the house of relationships, it's an obvious thought process to say this indicates good relationships. And then finally he says, Kshetra Dhanyarta Bogi, He's enjoy, he can enjoy land, property, and wealth. That goes with what I said about has a cash register. That's the thought process behind that. Righty? You with me? You understand what I am saying? <laughs> Any questions, let me know. Meanwhile, I'm going to mark this as a very good house for Mercury. So Mercury is shaping up to look like the other benefics. So far, the other, only other benefic or soft planet we looked at was the moon. But this is the same pattern. One good, two good, three, eh, four good. But Mercury is a little bit better in three than the moon was. And it's also a little bit better in one than the moon was. So let me check and see if there's any interesting questions. Joan Givan says, lots of people are going to be happy after this because they have a great Mercury. It's Actually, this is kind of a... a um, but this would be like popular because it's like you know when you do saturn in the houses or whatever or like mars in the houses it was like gruesome the whole way through but this would be like light on everybody because mercury is basically good in any house Uh, here we go. Here we go with the fifth. Vidya Shokya Pratapa Prachura Sutta Yuto Mantrika Panchamaste. Mercury is in the fifth. The person is educated, happy, influential, produces many offspring, and is a teacher and advisor. Really simple pro thought process here, right? If Mercury's in the fifth house, you get Vidya, education. That is so easy to understand because the fifth house is the house of intelligence and Mercury is the planet of intelligence. Sokya, the fifth house is a, just a generally beneficial house and Mercury is just a generally beneficial planet. So you're going to get Sokya, happiness. Pratapa is very interesting. Pratapa means influential. And again, if you remember from the previous streams where we're looking at planets in the fifth house the fifth house always has this thing the fifth house has a co connection to the tenth house whereas like the the tenth house is the fruit of of the fifth it the fifth the tenth house relies on the fifth house for its success so things that are in the fifth house affect the tenth house so if Mercury is in the 5th house, you get an effect from the 10th house, which is Pratapa, to be influential. And of course, mix it with the rest of the stuff. The person will be influential because of their mercurial stuff. Depending on the chart, it will be something about Mercury, like their ability to relate, their ability to be tactful, their ability to negotiate, their ability to mediate, their ability, ability to invent, their ability, ability to speak or entertain. Something mercurial will make them very influential. Then he says, Prachura Sutuyuto. They're going to have a lot of kids. That's kind of interesting. Mercury is not. Ah. Mercury is not particularly sexual, right? Mercury is fairly asexual. So it's not on that basis that Mercury in the fifth produces kids. So bear that in mind because you're not just trying to understand the letter of the words if you're trying to understand the spirit of what he was thinking about 
because if you understand the spirit of what he's thinking about, you can use the information dynamically. If you only understand the letter of the word, then you can only use it literally. Um, so he's not thinking about Mercury in the fifth makes a person sexy or sexually active. It's just that the Mercury represents children. Not like Jupiter. Jupiter represents producing children and raising children. Mercury represents children directly. And so if it's in the house of children, there's a thing that you should pay attention to. There's a synergy. The, house, the planet of children is in the house of children. So I guess this person is good with children. That's one way to put it. But procura means like they procure a lot of stuff. They procure a lot of, or they attract a lot of kids. They're good with kids. And kids also mean students. So bear in mind that way. It can have all those different kinds of ramifications. Mantrika. So some people want to translate mantrika as they're a wizard. The, uh, the, the idea is they know how to use mantras. So maybe you might find this in a chart which is particularly occult oriented. And see in an occult oriented chart, seeing Mercury in the fifth house would color that even more. Oh, I bet you they know spells. I bet you they know mantras. I bet you that they know ways to invoke things through words. But in a chart that's not already otherwise occult or mystic. Mantrika can have a, a simpler meaning. Mantra is words of advice. Yeah, educational words. And a mantri is a guide. So there's really no reason to make the word mantrika be so different than the word mantri. So, so Mercury in the fifth, it's basically somebody who can educate other people. Somebody who can teach other people or guide other people. And that goes along with Vidya and the intellect that synergizes from having the planet of intellect and the house of intellect. You understand? So Mercury scoring big with another blue. But again, this is the same pattern that the moon had. Kind of, let's go see. I think the moon is a little bit more me you know, medium because it's yeah, see, this is basically the same pattern for the moon. Whereas Mars was opposite. You see, that's the basic thing you have to bear in mind. 3, 6, 11, 10, they're takey houses. Ooh, pochaya. And so they do good with planets that are takey or tough. Now, these other houses, 1, 2, 4, and 5, are generous. So they do good with planets that are generous or soft. Yes. Ross, so this placement with an exalted Jupiter is a solid indication of a teacher? I would say so, of course. If knowing those two parts of the recipe, I would say so. If I only know those two parts of the recipe. Sheila says, my friend has Mercury in the fifth and she always gives advice and she's very influential. Right, we can move on to Mercury in the sixth. So this is the other thing you guys were messing with before in the chat. But Mercury owns the sixth house. No, Mercury has the sixth sign. It has nothing to do with the house. So let's see what he says about Mercury in sixth. Jata krodho vivadir. Wait, how's it go? This this line might be messed up. Jata krodo Well, maybe this is not meant to be a long. I. Jata krodo vivadir dushiripubala tavaso I don't know. This could be some kind of messed up syllable somewhere. Anyway, the translation is kind of clear. Anyway. Mercury in the sixth, they are Vivadi. Do you know what Vivadi is? 
A vivari is somebody who argues. So you say something and they'll say something else. Like if you say, oh, the 80s had good pop music, they'll say, no, the 80s pop music was terrible. But if you say, oh, the 80s pop music was terrible, they'll say, actually, I think the 80s pop music was good. I mean, look, blah, blah, blah. They, they take an oppositional stance to whatever you say. Vivadi. That's Mercury in the Sixth. And um, I forget what word this is also. Oh, Dushi also means opposite. They're oppositional. They oppose things. They oppose. So Mercury in the Sixth. Look, the thought process here is this is the house for struggling the sixth house is a house for struggling and dealing with problems and dealing with enemies but mercury is is counter to that it's opposite to that mercury is about friendships and relaxation so it's it's completely at odds with the sixth house so don't expect it to do well here it will affect the way you speak because mercury has a huge impact on speech the speech will be inimical It'll take it'll take an attitude in speech as if it's dealing with enemies all the time and it'll turn speech into a way of fighting that's what vivadi and dvishi means and then krodho means basically they get angry this is the this is the clash between mercury being relaxing and gentle and nice but the sixth house being tough and fighty but there is one thing even in the sixth house that's okay with Mercury. Ripu Bala Hantalaso. So I have two opinions in my mind about how to divide that phrase up and translate it, but the way that I already have written out is destroys the power of enemies without effort. I was playing the words here. Alasa means not giving effort. Hanta means to kill or destroy. Bala means strength and Ripu means the enemy. So Ripu Bala Hanta Laso means to destroy the strength of your enemies in a lazy way. My, my, my first son, this teacher Prabhupada, he had this phrase lazy intelligence. He thought lazy intelligence is a good thing. It's a way to, to get things done with a minimal amount of effort, he called that lazy intelligence. So this is something that we are looking at he here with Mercury in the sixth house. The intellect will figure out ways that it can be lazy. So a secondary way of translating this is one of the effects of Mercury in the sixth house is a laziness. But because it's a clash between Mercury, which likes to relax, and the sixth house, which wants to work. But what Mercury will do is it will try to work with its intellect, so it doesn't have to work with its muscle and sweat. So it will also, Mercury in the sixth house, you'll find a person that won't get directly into fights with people but they'll try to use the words and intelligent plans to just make the, the person that they have to fight with weak so that it's not any effort to overcome them. So you can say Mercury and the Six, they fight with their intelligence and they fight with their words. Any questions about it? I'm going to say that it is basically negative. But... It's hard to put a total red on this because you are destroying the power of your enemies. That's a good thing. So I think Mercury is going to get away with a yellow flag in the sixth house, from my judgment. As far as Mercury goes, it's probably the second least uh, desirable placement of whatever house it could be in. But still, Mercury is good in general, anywhere. Alright, any questions about it? But Mercury in the sixth. Yeah, we don't know, Shell. Mer so, Shell has Mercury in the sixth. First of all, we don't know how you're calculating it. Second of all, let's just say you're calculating it the way I would calculate it. 
I'm not argumentative or troubled by enemies, maybe because of Munitor's right. So you're thinking the right way. It, salt usually produces a salty meal, but salt is also involved in ice cream. And so, you know, salt, that doesn't mean that salt isn't salty. It doesn't mean that Mercury in the sixth doesn't have these actual implications. It's just that when it's mixed with so many other things, it might not be the thing that you notice in the outcome. Why is it angry Mercury in the sixth? Because Mercury likes friends. Mercury is friendly, but sixth house is enemy. Mercury is friends, sixth house is enemy, this clash. So you're going to get friend, friends and enemies clash, which means you're going to get angry at people that you shouldn't. Or you're going to be friendly with people that you shouldn't, and then that's going to make you angry later. Since Mercury acts, act, aspects the seventh from itself, does it mean that the seventh house traits from the placement house would also be applicable? Yeah, but it's not particularly... Yeah. But for that, you want to actually look to see if the aspect influences the house or not. And you have to know about aspects and degrees and stuff like that. And by the way, so if, when you go down that road... You're not just going to think about the 7th from Mercury, but also the 4th and the 8th. All right, moving on. How are we doing on time? 37 minutes. Let's go look at the next one. Mercury in the 7th. Guess what? He really likes this, even though it's not Mercury's Digbala. Mercury's Digbala is in the first, but he actually really likes Mercury in the seventh, and it should be pretty obvious to you why. The same thing. It was the same reason as Mercury in the fourth was really good. Pragyoste charuvesha sasakala mahima yati bharyam savittam. Mercury in the seventh. He has a clear and decisive intellect is well dressed celebrated and has a wealthy spouse so basic thought process what was i talking about why is it the same as fourth basic thought process seventh is about relationships with other people mercury is about relationships with other people mercury is the planet for negotiating interacting etc so Mercury in the seventh house, you have this synergy. The planet and the house are about the same thing in the same way. Mercury is pro-relationships. Seventh house is pro-relationships. So bing, that lights up in a good way. So that's why basically Mercury in the seventh house is good. And you get this thing, baryam savitam. The spouse is wealthy. And the spouse is mercurial. The spouse is good. So the spouse can be wealthy or maybe intellectual or something mercurial about the spouse good spouse good marriage pragyo clear and decisive intellect this is interesting so why do we get an effect of intellect from mercury in the seventh well, of course, one of the factors is that the Mercury is the planet of intellect, but does the seventh house have something to do with intellect? The seventh house has to do with things which are invisible, things which are disappearing, and also the seventh house has to do with other people. One of the things that you can, one of the things that you can understand about what intellect actually is from astrology, is that it's primarily in the fifth house. And that means that it's just west of the fourth. So it's our internal effort to understand other people. Seventh house being west. So intelligence has to do with taking things in from the outside, processing them and understanding them. And then intelligence also has to do with being able to take things from the inside and put them out. So that intelligence has to do with things from the inside going out. That's why Mercury in the fourth is good. 
but taking things in from the outside is also why Mercury in the seventh is good. So there's a different kind of intellect. The intellect of Mercury in the fourth is they're good with like putting their plans and their ideas in, in, into a form that other people can interact with so they can make real their plans. In the seventh house, they're very good at understanding other people and that's what pragya means. Things. They see things in a very clear way. Oh, I got disconnected some for some reason. Not sure where I got disconnected, but we're back. So anyway, pragya means it's clarifying. They have a clear ability to see things and distinguish between what is what. Charuvesha is interesting. Mercury's quality is to be very neat. And the seventh house is you, where you're interacting with other people personally. So Mercury will be, has, the effect is that Mercury cares about how other people perceive it. So it will take the time to make itself look presentable. Sasakala Mahima means they have all greatnesses, or people like them. People celebrate them. Okay? Any questions on Mercury in the seventh? It's definitely another good spot for Mercury. Again, let's, let's just see how is, how is Mercury following the pattern. Is it anything like Mars? It's exact opposite from Mars. See? Is it anything like the Moon? It's exactly the same as the Moon. So that's what I'm trying to tell you, the basic way of figuring out how planets do in houses. Checking to see if you have any. You guys are asking about Vedic system. You want to, the Vedic system is here, explained here. Um, it's you would use the whole sign would be as the house and the signs are based on the equinoxes not on Ashwini much to the chagrin of the people who are into the Vedic astrology alright we'll go on we're going to look at Mercury in the 8th Now, what do you think, actually, before we flip the, the screen over there? I was kind of curious about this. I do happen to have Mercury in the 8th house. What do you expect from Mercury in the 8th? Let's review... What did the moon look like in the 8th? It was iffy. So, the 8th house, it's not a takey house. It's not 3, 6, 10, or 11. So it's not in that category. It's just in the, it's just a house which is kind of difficult or dustana. So the soft planet to soft house thing, hard planet to hard planet, doesn't really affect the eighth house because the eighth house isn't necessarily soft or hard. It's just kind of rough or difficult. So let's see what he's going to say about Mercury in the eighth. You know, it's it's generally not a very celebrated house. He says the kya. Oh, kya ta kya chira yu kula brida di patir gestama gestama dan daneta. He says very good stuff about it. He says the person is celebrated. They are long lived. They support a family or lead a group. They command people and they are a judge. So let me explain the words. The kya. So you can just simply say that they're celebrated, but the actual the detail of the meaning is they're the topic of conversation. So Mercury in the eighth is kind of stirs things up. They sp they're a little controversial. That's the thought process, because the eighth house is critical. Mercury is friendly, so it's not going to be all roses with Mercury in the 8th house. There's a clash going on between critical and friendly. But the 8th house and Mercury have something really good together. The 8th house sees into the invisible, and the 
and Mercury is the intellect, which is trying to comprehend things. So there's some good stuff and some not so good stuff about Mercury in the eighth. So he says that they're going to be vikyatakyas. People are going to be talking about them. But it's not necessarily that it's always going to be people who like them. They're going to speak about things that are controversial. And then people are going to have polarized reactions to it. And hence they become the topic of conversation. Chirayu long life. Does it make any sense? It's just that the eighth house is the source of life force. It's Ayush Bhav and Mercury is healthy. Kula Brit. Kula Brit means they support a family. It's hard to understand the thought process behind that. I don't really know the thought process behind that. Or they lead a group. But I'll tell you some of the nuances of it is the Mercury in the eighth house the person is not very compliant. So they're going to be unique, and that's why they become the Brit. Like responsibilities then fall on their shoulders, or, or, or people look at them as the you know what are you going to say about this? So they become like the leader or the central figure of something. It's coming back to this this thing about Mercury being in very insightful, but the eighth house being very critical. And so Mercury in the 8th house always has something critical to say, and so therefore they get a lot of focus. Adipati. Maybe he is clarifying Kulabrit Adipati. So it's really clarifying that that's what I just said. They're the commander of people. And finally he says Dandaneta, which means they're a judge. Dandaneta, which means it means the person who carries the rod. So, so the judge, they hit the hammer on the thing, right? Or they enforce a punishment. That's what Dandaneta means. So the thought process here is that the eighth house is critical and Mercury is insightful and intelligent. So this, the main thing about Mercury in the eighth house is they have a critical intellect. So they will be looking at your mistakes so they become judges of other people. They become judges, and therefore they become leaders, and therefore they become the focus of attention. That's what he's talking about, Mercury in the Eighth. Anybody else have Mercury in the Eighth? If you happen to have it in a sign which is more gentle, then you maybe it won't match with exactly the way I described it. But if you happen to have it in a sign which is more fiery, or tough, then probably it will really match. Or depending on what planets you have it influenced by. But he says this is good, right? I mean, there's no real reason to put this as yellow. It's just good. I mean, I was bringing up some of the thought process of how this good stuff is coming about as a result of things that might be a little bit unpleasant, but I'm going to mark it as blue. So Mercury is one of the planets that can that does good in the 8th house. Blue. Good people. Yeah, that's a good point, Nathaniel. I was thinking about this too. He's making the point that the 8th house is really what you're getting from people. But Mer and Mercury is about how you deal with people. So I guess Montreshore is thinking this this works well. But I would also have a question mark in my head of does it work well because Mercury is generous, but Mercury is kind of in the middle of generosity and not. It's blue. We made it. We survived. All right, let's see Mercury in the ninth. 
I'm sure you're thinking everything is going to be good with Mercury in the ninth. Vidyartha Chara Dharmai Sahatapas Bude Sahatapas Sabude, right? It's probably Sahatapas Sabude. Tapasi Vidya Vidya Vidyartha Chara Dharmai Sahatapasi Bude Sat Pravino Tiv Sat Pravino Tivagami. Well educated and puts it to good use. Moral and philanthropic, self-controlled, experienced expertise, and very well-spoken. Kind of obvious because the ninth house is about education. And Mercury is the student, and Mercury is the intellect, so it would be pretty hard to imagine Mercury in the ninth house would get a negative review. So the first thing he says is he's well-educated, Vidyartha. He's a good student. And Vidyartha Chara, well, he's well educated. Vidyartha means he's a student, is a good student, and Vidyartha also means a person who puts the knowledge to use. They're able to apply the knowledge, so their education is not fruitless. That's what I'm trying to say. And then Achara is Dharma. Their behavior is. Dharmic, they do good acts, they're philanthropic, they're moral. Why? Mercury is very good, it's a very good planet, it treats people fairly. The ninth house is about how you treat other people, it's on the west side of the tenth. So that's the, that's the idea there, they treat people fairly, they treat, yeah, they treat people responsibly. So Dharma, you can put it as they're dharmi. You can say it means philanthropic, or you can just say it means they're very responsible. They treat people the way they should. Tapasi, they're self-controlled, well-behaved. Tapasi also inclines, uh, also indicates a person who's not selfish. And then the pravina. Pravina means they're good at things. They're, they're experienced. They know how to do things. And Vagmi means they speak very well. Ati Vagmi means they're very, very well spoken. So we're going to go now to Mercury in the 10th after we give this one a big fat blue. Mercury in the 10th. Siddharamba Suvidya Balamati Sukha Sat Karma Satyan Vita K. If Mercury is in the 10th, successfully completes their projects is well educated, is strong, is very happy, does good deeds. It's kind of, in some ways, the, the good deeds part is similar with the ninth house. But let me explain the thought process. Successfully completes their projects, Siddharamba. That's why the, this is going back to the, the connection between the fifth and the tenth. The tenth house is your success, but the fifth house is your intellect. Well, your success is dependent on your intellect really is because even if you say no she slept her way to the top or she paid off everybody or something it's still from the intellect that they figured out how to do that they figured out that that was the most effective way forward so the, the fifth house is what enables the tenth house success so now that we're talking about the tenth house when we talked about the fifth house mercury in the fifth we saw it made an influential person which is the tenth house effect now when Mercury is in the tenth, you see it has something to do with the fifth. The fifth is the plan maker. So when Mercury is in the tenth, you have the planet of intelligence or planning in the house of the effect. Right? The uh, the fruit has the thing has produced a fruit when it's in the tenth house. So the idea here is that they they see their plans through to completion. The their intelligence directly affects 
the manifested world. The intelligence being Mercury and the 10th house being the manifested world. So he's saying, well, Mercury's in the 10th house, then their intelligence must come all the way through to physical reality. They must actually complete their plans. And that's what Siddharamba means. Suvidya means they get a good education. What is that? It's just one of the things about 10th house is it's a lot like 1st house in terms of how you interpret it. The planet here is just very, very visible. So a lot of times you won't mix it with anything. You'll just take the the nature of the planet and pull that directly out as the interpretation. So Mercury is an intelligent planet. It's an educated planet. If it's in the 10th house, the person is very educated. Strong and very happy. Hmm. Very happy is obvious because Mercury is recreational. But strong, I don't understand the thought process. I'm just going to be honest with you. And then, uh, unless I don't see, maybe he's phrasing things like Suvidi Balam. Suvidi Balam Atisuka, they're very happy because of the strength of their education. Sat Karma. Oh, there's one more thing. Satyanvita. They're truthful. Sat Karma. They do good deeds. Because Mercury is intelligent. So you'll And the 10th house is the house of karma. So they're going to work effectively. So it does good deeds or acts effectively. Same thing. Satyanvita means they're truthful. Mercury is the speech planet. It's in the 10th house. It's right out in the open. K, the sky. So the, 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 the words are not hidden. They're truthful. Any questions there? Look, we're almost done. And let's just take a look. Is this not exactly the opposite of Mars in the houses? It is exactly the opposite, almost. But Mars was okay in the 10th. Why? Because 10 and 11 are also Upacha. So they're also takey houses and do good with a planet like Mars. Is it the same as Moon? It's like, wow, looking almost exactly the same as Moon. Sun, sun looked exactly like Mars. You see the pattern, right? We have two more to finish up. Aren't we going to see examples of charts? Maybe if we have time. But we're going. To, we always go over time. So. Maybe I'll just quickly sh show you one or two. All right, Mercury in the eleventh. Who said that? Thank you, Ava. You see, Zena, it's also, Zena says, it's really cool. I think it's super interesting how in different languages there is no direct translation. It's not even a translation thing. It's a language thing. Words have many meanings. Actually, words are just like an astrology chart. That's why Mercury is good at astrology and good at words. Words and astrology chart are exactly the same. The meaning of one word changes depending on what the next word is or what the word before it is or the environment in which it was spoken and it's exactly the same thing with astrology the meaning of mercury in the 10th house means something like in, in a dictionary but it changes depending on what else is in the 10th house or where the 10th lord is or etc 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 and so the wor words have these multiple meanings and a lot of times a person who's good with words like an astrologer like Montreshwar they're picking words really carefully because this particular word has the exact connotations that they want now, there's different ways of saying intelligence or there's different ways of saying friendship that have different meanings that have different connotations 
the difficulty with translation when it, where it comes to a translation difficulty is sometimes when a language is not native and especially if it's like Sanskrit very old and it's really almost nobody's native language anymore then we may have forgotten connotations but you can but if you're a good linguist you can always reconstruct connotations by understanding the etymology of the word anyway that's a little bit of a detour but thank you Chad and Ava and everybody let's go and see what 11 is Bhavayu Satya San how does it go? Bhavayu Satya Sando Vipula Dana Suki La Page Bhritya Yukto Mercury in the 11th long lived Bahu Ayu Satya truthful Sando Vipula I'm going to explain this one. This was a good. This is a good example of a translation. Sando Vipula has many good contacts. You, just, you have to understand what the eleventh house is to understand what Sando Vipula means. Danasuki, they're wealthy and they're happy. And Bhutti Yukto, they employ other people. All right, thought process. Bavayu, we really don't know the thought process. It's just there's a general effect on the lifespan. Mercury seems to be, he talks more about Ayu with Mercury, or lifespan, than he did with the other planets. So apparently in his thought process is that Mercury has a lot to do with your balance. And balance has to do with, the old way of looking at health was balance, it was balance. Everything is in balance and the body remains healthy, but when something happens that kicks it out of balance, then things start to go wrong. So Mercury has a lot to do with health, so this is probably the thought process why he's talking a lot about lifespan. Wherever Mercury is doing good, then he likes the lifespan. Truthful. If you put anywhere Mercury, anywhere up in the sky, he liked it. And the thought process as well, Mercury is very evident here, so the speech is going to be transparent. Like that. And then, Sandho Vipula. Sandhi means where things join. Vipula means they have a lot of them. So they have a lot of things joining. So it means that they have. What is the 11th house about? The 11th house is about social contacts, friends, not, not like friend, friends like with friendship bracelets, but just people that are not your enemies, people that you interact with, people that you do business with, people that you go to a baseball game with, people that you go to the club with. Um, so Mercury is great with the... Mer the 11th house is contacts, networks. Who do you know? Socializing, social contacts. Mercury is fantastic with that. Mercury is about friendships and meeting people interacting with people so mercury in the 11th house is very good on this point of having a lot of contacts it's not necessarily having a lot of friends because contacts are different than friends and he chose this word santo instead of bandhu for surit he said sando which just means contacts they have contact with a lot of people they know a lot of people Dana, that's obvious. The, t the 11th house is the house of wealth, profit, and Mercury is a profitable planet. It's mercurial, so it's going to be good. Suki, it's also obvious. The t 11th house is the house of pleasure. Mercury is a planet of recreation, so that's going to be good. Vritya Yukto, they'll have employees or servants, so that means that they're not a worker, they're a boss. And it'll be because of their intellect. So we like this. Mercury in the 11th. And then let's just look at Mercury in the 12th. And then you can, I'll let you guys pick two houses. I know you're going to pick the one that you have in your chart. And then we'll look at charts. 
two charts with Mercury in those two positions. So now finish it up. Dino Vidya Vihina Pariba Vasahito Tie Nishangsho Lasascha. Oh, Mercury in the twelfth is a poor person, uneducated, insulted, unlawful, and lazy. Ah, oh, we got one bad spot for Mercury. Probably, I'm gonna say I want to look at this. This is it. That's the one bad spot for Mercury in the twelfth house. On the poor, obvious, it's the opposite. The 12th is about wealth, but in terms of spending, Mercury is about wealth. Coming and going, exchange. So it's not going to work too well. I wouldn't be surprised if you see very wealthy people with Mercury in the 12th, however. Because under conditions, the wealth aspect of Mercury might just go well with the 12th house. Uneducated, the 12th house is about things that you don't know can't see mercury's about knowing insulted the 12th house is enemies mercury's friends unlawful nusham show means un unlawful so the thought process there mercury follows rules and processes and if it's not functioning well the person won't follow rules Lazy. The intellect is not making a lot of plans when it's in the 12th house. So I want to look at somebody with the Mercury in the 12th house. And then I'll let you guys pick two more. Let me see the first two numbers that I see on the screen. <laughs> Hi, Seema. Okay, let's look at Biden's chart. You guys can say two houses and I'm going to look at them. Third and ninth. All right, let's do that. Let's start with 12. We're going to take this and then we're going to go to this and this. All right, now I can set it up so you can see it like that. Bingo. Got this down. I know what I'm doing. All right. Now let's take a look. Uh, let's. I want to look at Mercury in the twelfth first because it's kind of interesting. So I can select planet is Mercury, house is twelve, and I will search my. Small database. So look. Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Giorgio Armani, Angelina Jolie, Jim Morrison, and Caitlyn Jenner. Well, you guys mentioned Joe Biden. So the first thing to do is to check. Like, look. He has Mercury in the 12th. But it's with a whole bunch of other planets. So that's the first thing. It's not just going to be... It's You know that this is going to be a highly modified Mercury in the 12th because it's mixing with a lot. It's not... In other words, to go back to the recipe analogy, it's not a recipe with like, that, with like two ingredients, salt and potatoes. It's a recipe with a lot of ingredients. So the likelihood that this one particular ingredient that you've started with is going to come out prominent in the and result dish is not high so that then what i would do is look at those other planets and see what they're lords of because you want to see if the house yoga is form so for biden you got mercury is the 10th lord and it's right its closest neighbor is the sun and that means it's got a raj yoga of the ninth and 10th lord so the fact is that his Mercury in the tenth house, his Mercury in the twelfth house, is in Raja Yoga. 
And when planet is in Raja Yoga, you should not focus your you should take your attention away from the negative implications of the interpretation and you should bring it towards the positive ramifications. What about Mars? Well, look at that. Mars is the fifth lord. So his Mercury in the twelfth, it's got the fifth lord on one side and the ninth lord on the other side. So he's got two Raja Yogas on two sides. If you know what's what and and stuff about like maybe he's a liar or something well he's got jupiter exalted so it's not likely and he's got moon exalted so it's not likely and he's got jupiter exalted very strongly influencing that mercury in the 12th house okay so then you guys wanted to do, you said three and nine. I don't know why you wanted to do nine. Probably just got lucky. I don't find it, the nine, terribly interesting, but let's take a look at who I have in my database with it. Look at that. We got Pierre Cardin. After we have Giorgio Armani, now we have Pierre Cardin. Then we have this horrible person, Jeffrey Dahmer. Another shady person, Bernard Madoff. I thought they were supposed to be moral. Tracy Lords, Deepak Chopra, and then two people that I'll, only I know. Um, let's look at Jeffrey Dahmer. Because he seems to be flying in the face of what Mercury in the ninth is supposed to be. But Jeffrey Dahmer, I forgot how I analyzed this chart before. It, this is the chart that's a lot like Hitler's, isn't it? And having debilitated Jupiter in the fourth house. So what's going on with this Mercury in the ninth house? It's just not as influent. Oh, it, okay. It's kind of mysterious. I think this chart was kind of mysterious to me. I think it's you're looking mostly at the what is this prominence? Saturn. Saturn is prominent. It, this 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 tells a lot of the story. This is like one way to look at the recipe and see what how much okay how many cups of sugar one cup two cups half a teaspoon a tablespoon to so the amount of mercury in this recipe is quite low, as you can see from this stuff. Whereas it's mostly about Saturn, and then the pro the planets that are really standing out in terms of dignity is Jupiter and Mars. So Mercury is kind of in this recipe somewhere, but not very loud. So I would say, I would say you would either think it's going to be Saturn or Mars that really dominates this chart and Mercury is not as much of a big deal. You shouldn't focus that, that much on it. Let's look at somebody else with with uh, Deepak. Mercury in the ninth. He's got it with the ninth lord as well. And with Jupiter, the tenth lord. So he's got more of a standard Mercury in the ninth house feeling. Bernie Madoff. Somebody asked for that. Mercury in the ninth with debilitated Saturn. Alarm. Plus, he's got, uh, got a lot of stuff on Rahu K2 axis. And then you guys want to look at three, Mercury in three. Mercury in three. 
What was Mercury in 3 supposed to be about? Let's go back and review that. Mercury in the third house, timid, moderate lifespan, amiable with peers and siblings, dejected if burdened with work. That's funny. Ramana Maharishi, they, it has no material drive, doesn't want to get involved in karmas. Michelangelo is interesting. This uh, Michelangelo Walt Disney might be showing you something which is on this screen actually see here as this skilled artistic intelligent this is this is you know from a different source but something you should think about Mercury planet of intellect third house is the house of skill expertise uh, he didn't mention it Montreshwar skipped that or didn't notice it Let's see, which one of these people should we look at? Walt Disney. Oprah Winfrey, good with peers. So it's in Aquarius in the third house with the ninth lord as the tenth lord. So it's in Raja Yoga. Okay, that's important. You remember we saw that in another chart that we looked at a couple of minutes ago. Who else do we got here? Ramana Maharishi. It's all by itself in the third house, so it's more simple. Plus, he's not stable, right? He's got sun and moon on Rahu K2. He's going to be extreme. But he's got Jupiter and Pisces. Okay. Hmm. Michelangelo with the first lord in the third house. Otherwise, fairly simple. All right. So those are some charts with Mercury in the third. I'll leave you with that. Let's see. Well, I talked about musicians and stuff a lot recently. I forget, but I'm starving now. So I'm going to go and eat. See you guys later. Thank you for joining me.